Good morning, Radiant Church. Hope you're all doing well. We're going to lead you in a couple songs of worship, some time to just bring our hearts and our song before the Lord. Um, and just want to bless you if you have someone in your home that can lead you in worship to go for it. Um, but we're just going to sing a couple songs with you. And I wanted to read from Psalm 43 before we started, before we start. It says, God, you are my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning and oppressed by the enemy? Send me your light and your faithful care. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you, God, with singing. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my God and my Savior. Lord, we do just bring our whole selves before you, whether we've felt downcast or disturbed or rejected or not heard by you, God. We just come and we say, bring us to your holy mountain. Send your light. Send your faithful care. We're coming to you with all we have to bring our offering of worship to, worship and praise to you from the real places of our heart, God. We just say that you're worthy. We need you. You're our God. We're the sheep of your pasture, and we're bringing our song, and we're bringing our ears to hear from you, to fellowship with you, Lord. We thank you that we're singing to you, and you're singing over us. You abide in us and we abide in you. We want to make our home in you and we desire for you to come and dwell in us. So come fill our houses, fill this office, fill this place, God, with your presence because that is what we're longing for, God, for you above all other things. Yes. Yeah, Jesus, we just, we do, we have such need of you so much desire for you, so much love for you, Jesus. Rise, O oh Lord, lift up your eyes, don't forget I'm helpless. Rise, O oh Lord, lift up your eyes, don't forget I'm helpless. Rise, O oh Lord, lift up
choosing us, God. We just choose you this morning. We love you because you first loved us. Thank you for choosing us, God, and for being so good to us, so patient and kind with us, God. We just give you everything. <laughs> you give us a reason to sing. You give us a reason to worship, God, and we just want to bring our offering of praise to you this morning for your goodness, God. You never change. Thank you, Lord.
give you thanks and praise. We sing hallelujah, all praise, glory, and honor, and thanksgiving to you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, God, that you lift us out of the miry clay. Thank you that you are a shield, Lord, around us, the glory and the lifter of our heads. We just stand in awe of your goodness and your care for us, God. We bless you, Jesus, today. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. I feel like I'm worshiping with you. <laughs> I love that. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the, the service, the sermon, and take a little time like we always do to greet the people around you or to send uh, a sweet text to a friend and say hi. Bless you. Welcome to the Virtual Connect Table, everybody. With Jared, with Mike, and with two coffee tables. Because one is never enough. Never enough! Hey, hop on the Church Center app to stay in the loop on what is going on. You can also give very easily there as well. Or you can go to radiantvisalia.com slash give. Or radianttolary.com slash give. That's true. One thing you notice on the Church Center app is our upcoming Kingdom Come events where you can get information. Those are happening Friday nights in Visalia, Sunday nights in Tulare. How has Visalia Kingdom Come been going? You know, the first one was a lot of fun. There's a lot of people there. And we got to hear from a variety of people, hop on the mic, pray, read scripture, give encouraging words. Something I noticed is there's a lot of youth there. High school youth was there worshiping. They had a great time at beach camp this summer and they are still going for it. So it was a lot of fun to be there. I was also thankful that mosquito spray because a lot of mosquitoes out there. How about in Tulare? How's Tulare been going? Yeah, it sounds very similar. So we had um, about 60 people come to the gardens mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous out there, spread out spaced out uh, across the lawn and same thing lots of participation people very excited to read scripture share encouraging words worship together um, tonight actually we're going to be specifically praying for renewal and revival in the church uh, and we're actually having a few pastors from other churches in Tulare come tonight and we're going to get a chance to pray for them and the people in their church as well so 6 30 tonight at the gardens very cool do you have mosquito spray <laughs> hey radiant church family it has been so long since we've seen so many of you face to face and kathleen and i are missing you desperately and we are so grateful that we're beginning to gather again and we look forward to seeing each one of you actually face to face that'll be amazing you know, in these last months since this uh, COVID quarantine hit, this has been a very challenging and difficult time for most of us. I know it has been for our family very much. As most of you know, Kathleen was diagnosed uh, back in the beginning of this COVID quarantine with cancer. And we were uh, immediately sent into a fairly long chemo treatment that just was completed last week. And we are just like praising God that we're through that leg of it. Uh, there's still some remaining uh, portions for us to walk through in Kathleen's treatment that we'll be doing in the fall, but we are so hopeful and feel so loved and blessed and encouraged by the support and the prayers that we've received that I just have to take a couple of minutes to just say thank you and to express our gratefulness. And first of all, just wanna say that we have felt just carried and held by God entirely through these months. His love and his mercy and his healing, his strength have been tangible in our lives and home and we are just so grateful. And our children and grandchildren have just lavishly loved on us and supported and cared for us in this time in, in ways that are amazing and that have been such a gift to us. We are just so blessed and I wanna just say that this church family has been incredible. We have been loved on lavishly and encouraged and prayed for, and we've had beautiful rocks delivered into our garden that are prophecy rocks, declaring truth 
about our hope and our future in Christ. And we've had flowers dropped off. We've had amazing meals and notes of encouragement and texts just at the right moment. And even a parade down our block and coming home from our last week of chemo treatment last Thursday. And just want to say that this has been overwhelming. We feel undone by it and hope and pray that every person could experience this kind of lavish love from God and from people. And I also want to just say that we have felt so supported and cared for by the leadership of Radiant. The elders and the staff and the other leaders of Radiant have really picked up the ball. Uh, while I was not able to carry my load during a really challenging and difficult time, others stepped in and allowed us, uh, gave grace to us and allowed us the room and the space to be able to walk through this uh, cancer journey. And we are just so grateful. So I, I simply want to say thank you. Thank you. We are, are grateful for the love and the support and our lives have been changed. We feel almost undone just by the expressions of beauty and love that we've experienced. So, so by God's grace, and by your prayers and support, we've made it through this difficult time. We've come through this. And I kind of want to check in and see how you're doing through this difficult time. How are you making it? This is Labor Day weekend. And uh, as I'm looking around at my friends' lives, uh, I'm going, you know, there's quite a bit of people feeling depleted and exhausted in their labors right now. I remember back in the very beginning of this quarantine time, we uh, gave a lot of special attention to what we called the frontline workers. You know, our medical staff and doctors and nurses and police and firemen, and uh, they deserve that, rightly so. We should be supporting and praying for and expressing our thanks. But as this, as this crazy season has gone longer and longer, it seems very clear to me that many people are facing some extreme challenges. Many of us feel like we're on the front lines, and that may be in our own homes, or it may be in a business that we're trying to run and operate, and everything in between. We've got business people that are trying to be creative and look for strategies to make ends meet at the end of the month, putting tables and chairs out on the street, or looking for other creative ways to make ends meet. We've got our youngest children who don't understand much what's going on in this quarantine like we adults do not really huh our youngest children though are missing play dates and playmates and playgrounds we have our school aged children and teens that are now in distance learning and sitting in front of computer screens through the day or in homeschooling but quarantine so they're being held back from the social uh, element. They're held back from their fun and their friends, and this is hard. And moms, your lives have changed, right? Things are different. You no longer have a little bit of a break in the morning or in the middle of the day where it's quiet, where you can get a couple of things done or just gather your thoughts because kids are everywhere. And you're either homeschooling or you're trying to help your kids with distance learning, which is a challenge all in itself. And all of a sudden, your time has evaporated. And for leaders in this time, and I don't care what you're leading, you can be leading in your business, you can be leading in government, you can be leading in schools, you can be leading in the church. This is a very challenging time for leaders because the demand is high for you to lead with clarity, but we are in the most unclear of times. Leading with clarity means pretending you know what's coming when you don't. And so this is a just an extremely difficult time. These are crazy times. And if you're feeling some of the burden of that and you're feeling weighted down by that, you might be coming to the point where you're saying, I've got to get a break or something's going to break. Something's going to break in me if I don't get a break from some of this. And I just want to say we hear that. So if you're feeling under the gun, if you're feeling under the pressure and burdened down and overwhelmed and wanting to give up, uh, I just want to say it matters. If you're a teacher right now and you are just coming home in tears and overwhelmed at the end of the day because you got into this profession 
because you cared about kids and wanted to be with kids and you find yourself now sitting with technology and 25 computer screens and you're overwhelmed and you feel depleted and empty. I just want to say it matters. It matters to us and more importantly it matters to God, your Father. He, uh, he cares about what's happening and he wants to be tangibly a part of this as much as he has been tangibly a part of this journey that Kathleen and I wa have walked through in our family in these last months. He wants to be very practically and tangibly a part of the pressures and the difficulties you're feeling. And what I'd like to do in these next few minutes is just read over you a very familiar scripture and then pray. Just pray for you and pray for us if I can. The scripture is out of Psalm 46 and it's just eight simple words. Maybe too simple for it to be something that we feel like, can this really matter? I know this scripture, I've heard this many times before. But it's in Psalm 46, verse 10, and it says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And this psalm, Psalm 46, is written to the children of Israel, the people of God, during a time of real turmoil and war and difficulty. And so it's a fitting invitation for us in these days. Because I know that we may not be at war really, but we feel like we're at war. There's a lot of difficulty. It's loud outside. There's a lot of noise. There's conflict. We're concerned about our government. We're concerned about our schools. We're concerned about our neighborhoods. There's a lot of noise and challenge going on. And so it's a beautiful kind of invitation to the people of God then and to the people of God us today. And those eight simple words, I think, give a two-part invitation that I just want to unpack for just a second. It says, first of all, be still. Be still. Quiet your heart. You notice it doesn't say, make everything stop outside. Stop all the war. Make everybody be silent. Silence your home, necessarily. It doesn't say that. It's not always within our power, not usually within our power, to silence the outside. But what we do have authority over is to silence the inside. So it's not silence everything going on, silence everything happening in our nation. It's, would you be still? Would you quiet your heart? Would you quiet the inside stuff that's happening? But that's not enough alone because it, while it's a good thing to kind of take a deep breath and to quiet down for a moment, the next step of this is absolutely critical and it says, and know that I am God. Now, what does that mean? That seems so simple. It means be reminded that God is still God. God is still God. He is over everything. He is with you. He's in you. He's not leaving you. He is still going to be your tower of strength. He is still going to be the deliverer and the one that's going to get you through. So be still and know that he is God. And I just want to speak it over you again. And I just would say, would you just kind of close your eyes for a moment and just receive from your Father. Be still. Quiet your heart. And remember that he is God. Remember that he's the one that's watching over you. I want to just read a very quick, uh, very short story out of a book that I'm reading right now called Soul Keeper. And kids, listen to this. It's kind of a cool story. It's a picture of a mountain village. And uh, see if you get this picture in your mind. It says, There once was a town high in the Alps that straddled the banks of a beautiful stream. The stream was fed by springs that were old as the earth and deep as the sea. The water was clear like crystal. Children laughed and played beside it, and swans and geese swam in the stream. You could see the rocks and the sand and the rainbow trout that swarmed at the bottom of the stream. And high in the hills, far beyond anyone's sight, there lived an old man who served as the keeper of the springs. He had been hired so long ago that no one could remember a time when he wasn't there. He would travel from one spring to another in the hills, removing branches or falling leaves or other debris that had fallen into the water. But his work was mostly unseen. One year, the town council, the government, uh, decided that they had better things to do with their money. 
No one supervised that man anyway, and they had roads to repair and taxes to collect and books, as to, books to buy, services to offer, and giving money to this stream cleaner seemed like a luxury. So the old man left his post. High in the mountains, the springs went untended. Twigs and branches, and worse, fell into the stream. Mud compacted the creek bed, and farm waste turned parts of the stream into stagnant bogs. For a time, no one in the village noticed the change, but after a while, the water was not the same. It began to look brackish and dirty. The swans flew away to live somewhere else. The water no longer had a crisp scent that drew children to play in it, and some of the people in the town began to grow ill. All noticed the loss of sparkling beauty that used to flow between the banks of the streams that fed their town. The life of the village depended on that stream, and the life of the stream depended on that keeper. Well, the city council reconvened and rethought their decision, and they found some more money, and the old man was rehired. Soon after that, the springs were cleaned again. The stream was pure. The children played again on its banks, and illness was replaced by health. The swans came home, and the village came back to life. The life of the village depended on the health of the stream. The stream is your soul and your heart, and you are the keeper. I think that little story, a little picture, gives a, a beautiful building out of what Psalm 46 is talking about. We can't change everything on the outside. And things are hard and are challenging right now. But we can go to the inside. We can tend to our inner soul and we can say, peace. Hold on. Remember that God is who he is. And I know I feel pretty inept at just tending to my own soul and inner life, but with the grace and the help of God, I feel pretty good at being able to say, okay, God, would you come and help me tend to my inner life? Would you help me to be able to give attention to what's happening inside, even though I can't change anything that's happening outside? So can I pray for you and for us right now? Would you join me? Thank you, God. Well, God, we just want to invite you right into the middle of all that we're experiencing. For those of us, God, that are feeling burdened down and weary and at wit's end and overwhelmed, Lord, we just want to step back from all of the pressures and we want to invite you in. And we say, would you come and help us, Papa? to give attention to our inner life. Would you come and help us to tend to the stream? Would you show us where the branches and the debris have fallen in that we can pull these things out? We give you access to our inner life right now, Jesus. We give you permission to come in and cleanse and touch in the gentle and the beautiful way that you do. You're so good at it. Be in every home right now. Would you presence yourself in every one of our homes. Would you help every mother and father right now, every mom and dad that feels overwhelmed and stretched and pulled apart, would you help them to find you as a hiding place? To be able to allow you in, to lift the load. You're good at it, Jesus. Would you come and lift the load? Would you help every business leader, every person that's in business, God, would you help us to turn to you to be our creative partner? Lord, you have great ideas. You're strategic. Would you be speaking to us? Would you be helping and partnering with us in the midst of all that we're facing? Would you help every teacher and school staff member in the midst of feeling overwhelmed and at wit's end with what we're facing right now? Would you help us to be able to let you in to tend to our hearts and souls? We don't have to carry this burden alone. Would you help us to remember that you are still God and that you are still with us and that you are still for us? Would you help us, every leader, would you help every leader to be able to draw on your strength and in the wishbone of trying to do what everybody wants and yet not having total clarity, 
Would you help us to depend on you and lean on you because you can carry us through? We remember your invitation that you give us, Jesus. We remember that you've said, if you're weary, if you're feeling burdened down, if you're feeling spent, then come to me. Come to me. Attach your life with me. Attach your inner life with me. Let it be tethered to me. And follow me and I'll give you rest. I'll bring rest to your soul. Lord Jesus, we just acknowledge that you're the only way. You're the only way through for us. You're the only one that we can turn to and really dump on and feel like, okay, you're made for this, so we do that. We turn and we open our hands on the, the disappointment, the burden, the places of feeling overwhelmed and unappreciated and feeling like we don't know if we can make it. We open our hands on all of that and we turn to you. We say, God, would you meet us in the midst of it? Would you help us to tend to our hearts and our souls? Lord, would you help us to be able to quiet our hearts and our souls, to remember that you are still God, that you are still our King? Would you help us so that we can still be a light to this dark and challenging time that we're in that's pointing to a good and a faithful Father? We love you, King. We love you, Jesus, and we surrender and submit our lives to you and pray, God, I pray right now that your rest and refreshment would come and fill your people. Lead us to life that is in you, in Jesus' name. Friends, God is with you and for you. Remember that he is still God. He is for you. He is with you. He's not leaving you in this time, and he can lead us into places of rest and refreshment, even, even in the midst of the things that we're facing. We love you. Look forward to seeing you soon.